we welcome you to the 100th meeting of the River Rock here from Buckenmeyer Stadium in Napoleon alongside Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts, set here for the start of the high school football season. Miles, we got a little appetizer down at Columbus Grove on a Thursday night, a handful of games, and now the first big Friday of the high school football season and a big one for us here. 100th time we will see Napoleon and Defiance do battle. Oh, where else would you rather be than right here right now? Did you say 100? I did. 100th time that, that these two teams have got together for the Red River, or not the Red River, but the Ri River Rock rivalry game. Say that t three times fast. But wow, what a game we're going to have in front of us. These two teams were surprised a year ago. It looked like Napoleon was going to win it. But Defiance came out of nowhere, stole that football game. It's the kind of rivalry that stuff always happens. And Defiance, a 7 0 winner a year ago in this game, and the Bulldogs are trying for back to back wins in this series for the first time since 2000 and 2001. As Napoleon leads this all time series 55 42 and 2. Miles a year ago, it was the defense for Defiance that shined. Napoleon inside the five, I believe it was three times, came away with no points as the uh, Bulldogs got that win at home. Even worse than that, inside the 25 times and came away with no points. Talking to Coach Swery earlier this week, he said, hey, if they scored uh, points when he crossed the 20 yard line, they probably win that football game. Unfortunately, the football field's 100 yards, not 80. Let's talk a little bit about the visiting uh, Defiance Bulldogs that win in this opener. One of uh, three that they had a year ago under Travis Cooper now in his second season. So the veteran coach of the two we're going to see this evening. He's had a couple of stops at Wasion and Brian. Got a couple of uh, offensive players back. Brez Zipfell, sophomore quarterback, threw for 321 yards. Gavin Miller, who was uh, the quarterback a year ago, is back for his senior year. And uh, got the move from quarterback to tight end to try to help this offense out. Yeah, tight end. He's also going to play on the defensive line. So how do you like that? One year you're the quarterback. Next year you're starting on the defensive line. Shows that he's a tough kid. But go back to Brez Ziffel talking to the offensive coordinator Doug Rates, the passing game coordinator. He says he's an ideal guy for their offensive system. If you're used to watching wide open football, includes a lot of screen games. And you saw some of the things that they did at Fairview when Doug Rakes was there. They can put numbers up on the scoreboard and through the air with uh, passing yards. Brez Ziffel has got a bright future. Well, Ziffel, uh, one thing he probably wishes he had would be some experienced linemen. His defiance lost four linemen. That's going to be one of their weaknesses here in the early part of the year. Also, linebacker Alex Halfel, someone that we are uh, real impressed with when we saw them a couple of times last year. Also, we'll have some work to do in the defensive secondary as well. Yeah, they do, but they get one added bonus coming over from Tenora. Christian Camaso, number 32, the senior linebacker, full back tight end guy he is a dynamic football player a physical force so he's going to help fill that void that they're missing at linebacker so we're going to take a quick time out here before uh we get to our uh, napoleon as uh, we'll step aside for the national anthem here in wsn Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday, back with you here from uh, Morley's Field, Buckemeyer Stadium in uh, Napoleon. Before we get any further into our pregame, need to tell you that our pregame sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Defiance and Napoleon is the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Well, Miles, we talked a little bit about Defiance. We'll get into our checks of the game in just a couple of minutes. Talk about Napoleon under first-year head coach Tyler Swery. It's kind of a slow start a year ago, dropping uh, their first five games of the year, including that opener to Defiance that we saw, turned it on, second half of the year, winning four of their last five, getting a couple of shutouts to close the year. Now you're going to see a little bit of different style offensively. Going to have a, a bunch of formations. Randy, we saw them in the scrimmage against Brian. They'll spread it out one formation. They'll be back in the old traditional straight T. Remember that? But here mm -hmm. in Napoleon, a straight T, you'll see that a little bit tonight. So they're going to throw all kinds of things at you. Going to be a power run, and then they have the big, giant, strong arm of Mr. Wolf. He can how when he throws that football number seven to quarterback Blake Wolf he has got a cannon for right hand you watch him play baseball he can get to the low 90s on his fastball you'll see that come out of his hand today when he throws the football and unlike defiance Napoleon with some experienced linemen back with four of their five also Andrew Williams one of those players played a little bit everywhere last year is going to be settled into that full-time role at quarterback because one of the losses for the Cats from a year ago Michael Chips an outstanding running back for them yeah all Michael Chips did a year ago was rush for over a thousand yards had 12 TDs so how are they going to fill that in well they're going to uh, rely 
rely on Williams to carry the football. And, buddy, they're going to lean heavily on that offensive line. Talk about some big fellas. They average 273 pounds across the offensive line. 305 with Lehman. Westhoven, he's the small one at 174. But the rest of these guys, Yantis, 277. Hardy, 223. And Deblin, 288. The big fellas we average 273. The size of defensive linemen for Defiance, you ready for this? Only 182. So you better believe the offensive line could play a huge factor for Napoleon tonight. Let's talk about the defense for Napoleon. Might be an early weakness as you look through that starting lineup, the probable players, Miles, two longtime names gone from that list. Josh Mack, great defensive back, punter, receiver. It's easy when you have six four kid, your mm -hmm. quarterback looks pretty good. And a good linebacker, Tanner Rubenstein, both earning all Ohio honors. Yeah, here Josh Mack, a two time all Ohio as a safety. He was a big fella, could jump unbelievably well, very athletic. Now you wonder what they're going to do defensively. Well, they're going to use two blocks of granite on the outside. Eggers and Stoner on the ends, 81 and 88. Those two guys are fantastic players. One of my favorites to watch, Henry Eggers. He never takes a playoff, led this team a year ago with tackles for loss at 13. They're going to funnel everything back into those inside linebackers. And don't forget, Jacob Aguilar played a lot of football for them last year. Number 32 had 41 tackles. So they're going to be pretty good on the inside as well. You did that on purpose, didn't you? Blocks of granite and stoner. Yeah, you, you like that? Yeah. You came up with that. It took you a while to come up with. All right, Miles, let's get to everyone's favorite part of our pregame, but some state bank checks for both of these teams looking at this one. Yeah, we got to start with the visitors of Defiance first and foremost. Uh, uh, for Defiance, you know, one thing that they did a year ago was they played harder, right? So this continued to play harder. That was a game everybody said Napoleon was going to win, but nobody thought that Defiance was going to go in and play out physical, out hustle, out everything and won that football game. And number two, they are going to have to throw short and get big gains. They're going to use the screen gain a little bit. Those guys are going to have to break tackles and get vertical because young Mr. Brez Ziffel got a huge future, but he's not a great deep ball thrower yet. And then number three, move the spot. Mr. Wolf, the quarterback, Blake Wolf for Napoleon. He's got a cannon, really good quarterback. However, he's kind of odd in the fact that he doesn't get to a drop. He catches the ball from the center and just stays in a spot. You use that to your advantage. Go and tackle that, that spot. Get him to move side to side. He's not as good as a quarterback that way. And then how about our State Bank checks of the game for Napoleon? Yeah, number one, how could you say red zone scores without all thinking about last year's game, right? Five times inside the 23 inside to five, including three minutes left in that football game, came up empty. You get to the red zone this year, you've got to figure out how to score. I think that's one of the reasons why they brought the old double tight end T formation back into this offense because it's a short yardage offense. Number two, go deep. You've got Wolf at quarterback at some point in time. Take a shot. If I were them, I'd have it in my game plan. We're going to throw vertical at least once a quarter. And then number three, peekaboo. Peekaboo, Randy. They're going to shade their second at the last possible moment, kind of confused the offense of Defiance by sliding and peekaboo and saying, I'm over here. No, I'm not. The safety is going to be here. He's going to move over there. Peekaboo, try and find me. They're going to play some games with that Defiance offense. That's like you down on the field with the coaches in the pregame <laughs> playing a little peekaboo. That is our State Bank checks of the game. And again, our pregame show for tonight's broadcast brought to you by the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll get set for the 100th kickoff of the River Rock rivalry between Napoleon and Defiance here on WOSN. for the opening kick here between Napoleon and Defiance. As I look through my notes, I can tell you that Defiance won the coin toss, deferred to the second half. Napoleon elected to take over with the football first. So we will see the Wildcats. So Napoleon in the blue uniforms with the white numerals. Defiance in the white with the blue. The big change, if you're one of those eagle-eyed fans like Miles is, you've noticed the lids are both nearly identical as Defiance has gone to the blue helmets. Yeah, a little going back to tradition with Jerry Beauty. You know, 97, I believe it was, they won a state title and they wore the 
dark blue helmets. It's a metallic blue. And they also went to a, a giant logo on the side. So you can see the bulldog coming through the D a little bit bigger than what it used to be. So hats off to them. Looking good, styling and profiling early. Opening kick goes through the end zone. So Napoleon will take over from their own 20 yard line. Under first year head coach Tyler Swery, long time assistant, told Miles earlier in the week that he was just as concerned about the game we did on Thursday between uh, Pandora, Gilboa, and Columbus Grove being a former Rocket player. Yeah, all uh, conference player in the uh, one BVC years ago. One eye on defiance, one eye keeping track on what's going on. First down run is going to be Andrew Miller. Or Andrew Williams, I'm sorry, I'll get names correct. It's Williams will get out to about the 24-yard line. Gain of four is going to bring up second and six. Well, some power football early, leaning on the big offensive line. Williams carrying the football. Looked like he was stopped, but that's a sign of a good run where you look up and you think you only get two, but you got four yards. But how about, hello, early, Christian Camaso, number 32, got a big hit for that defiance defense. And Christian Camaso, someone we really didn't talk about a lot in our pregame, a uh, longtime player. There's him and his brother, known at Tenora. Camaso made the uh, move over to Defiance baseball season. He's expected to help out both sides of the football. A little counter action here out of Napoleon on second down, but a good job of that trail defense. There's nowhere to go for Preston Speaks, senior running back. He'll get maybe a yard to the 25. Yeah, it's a really good job inside. The young fella, Gavin Miller, the senior rather, the guy that played quarterback a year ago, came free, turned that thing back inside as Jet Sweep toward them, and this is a huge third down early in this football game for the Defiance defense. Miles, another thing we didn't uh, talk a lot about in our pregame, we did mention Tyler Swear, of course, being a new coach. Just take a look at the uh, list of assistants as the pass is going to be caught. Receiver had to come back and get it, but a nice move to get the first down. And Stray Rubenstein still on his feet. He's going to get a first down out near the 40-yard line. Now, how about the athletic ability of the sophomore receiver? Caught it in front of the chains. It was one-on-one. -on -one. Used his athletic ability to get outside and get the first down. Huge catch and throw early in this game for Napoleon. First down out to the 39-yard line. Finish your thought. We're talking about before the play. A lot of uh, first-time varsity football assistants also on the staff at Napoleon. They go back on the ground, trying that right side once again with Speaks, who's going to get out across the 40 to about the 42. Yeah, Brogan Castile, number 24, chased it down from the backside, or else it would have been some more yardage. And there's a big conversion on third down, Randy, because this is an offense that looks like they're going to run, run, rely on their senior quarterback to make a throw, to get the first down so they can run, run. And if they can stay on the field offensively, that huge size advantage that they have against the speed and quickness of defiance will really slow them down. So it's a gain of four. It's going to bring up second and six from the 43-yard line. Tight formation with the double wing. They'll give it to the first man through. He's going to be met right at the line. And That's Christian Camasel coming from his inside linebacker position. He read a gap, filled it in a hurry. Big fella can bring the thump. And here we are again, another third down possible throw situation for Napoleon. Yeah, Mason Switzer, senior running back with the call there. About three yards on the gain. A very third and manageable coming up here. We'll call it third and three. Cats have it at the start of the uh, N logo. If you know the rivalry between Napoleon and Defiance, you know the turf fields. Logo size is involved in that rivalry battle. Rollout, completed pass. They'll find Devin Dietrich, junior receiver for the first down. Now, something I really like that they're using early in this game, offensive coordinator Nick Wagner for Napoleon on third down. They're going quick, you know, so they get under the center and they're snapping the football. Defiance is the second time that they're kind of scrambling to chase the formation, not aware that the ball had been snapped. Good game plan early from Napoleon. Nice job, Nick Wagner. Yeah, pretty impressive opening drive for the Wildcats. They're at the Defiance 42. They'll break the huddle and move here. They've taken about three minutes off the clock here early on. I'll go back on the ground with Williams. He's going to get pushed backwards. Not a whole lot of running room there. Well, I think it's established really that Christian Camaso, he is a difference maker on this Bulldog defense. Third tackle already on this series. It's going to be tough to run the football inside if you don't reach Christian Camaso. He'll say no gain on the play. It's going to bring up second and 10. As Napoleon, uh, for the first time, kind of taking their time in the huddle here. 
Good to see that some of the traditions continue. The quarterback coming all the way over to the sideline to get the play. He's got to get his steps in. Right. We love you, Coach Strzok. Wolf, under some pressure, still alive, back to midfield. Finally, he's going to go down back at the 46-yard line. Uh, nothing but a coverage sack. I give credit to the guys up front for defiance to continue chasing the quarterback. But Wolf was scrambling. Buddy, the rule is if your quarterback is scrambling, you don't stop your feet. One guy goes deep, one drags across the field. Other guy comes across the other side of the field. Wolf was looking at three receivers staring right at him. Nowhere for him to go. Probably would have been better served just to throw it away. By the way, did you see who the who the player for Defiance was to finish him off? <laughs> Former quarterback. It was number 21, Gav Gavino Gomez. Uh, Govano, okay. Miles, I, I had no Gav the big Gavino. There you go. So those of you familiar with our baseball coverage this last spring know the great Gavino. Hey, he's a big hitter in the spring and in the in the fall. Oh, yeah. oh, look at you. That's punny. Huge third down here for Napoleon. A little movement that goes uncalled. Here's one thrown up for grabs. That one's going to go out of bounds, and it's going to be incomplete. Now third and long, easy decision for the Defiance defense. We're going to play back, keep everybody in front of us. They're ready for the fade. They went to a cover three. Clay Greewe, defensive coordinator for Defiance, he was ready for that for third down. Now it's the announcer's curse, Miles. We talked about how great the offense was. And as soon as we get done, it kind of sputtered out. Oh, I, I tell you what, though, Tyler Swear, he's got to be happy. They controlled the game, right? They got the ball in their 20. Now they flipped the field. So they got the football in a good position. They're going to have an opportunity to pin Defiance deep. Yeah, also chewed up about four and a half minutes off that clock. Punt is going to get away. A little hit after the contact. This one is going to be loose. A little bit of an issue trying to field that one. Yeah, as Anthony Wilder who's got unbelievable speed, but got to catch it first. That's the number one rule when you're going to be a guy back returning punts. you got to catch it. He made it into an adventure, but good for him. He fell on top of it. He kind of let it hit. I shouldn't say kind. He let it hit, and then you can tell he's lost in between. Okay, do I let that bounce and then hope it goes into the end zone, or do I try to not have a start at the one yard line. Well, usually the rule is you, you put your heels about the nine or the 10. If it goes over your head, you let it roll into the end zone. If not, you come up and catch it. we will see the Bulldogs on offense for the first time this evening. Quick throw, they'll get rid of that out to the flat and on cue, some of that speed on display is Wilder able to get that, that out across the 30 yard line for the first down. Yeah, Tyler Swery, who's working as the defensive coordinator and head coach, kind of a weird thing. Most guys, when they become a head football coach, they want to get on the offensive side, but he's been the defensive coordinator here for so long, he didn't want to change things up. And one thing they worked on all week long was defending that screen. Early advantage for Defiance on the screen game. It's quickly out to the 31 yard line. Zip fell in a shotgun. It's, we'll, we'll see a lot of defiance. Gets the snap, quickly fires once again, goes back to that far sideline as the receiver is going to be taken out of bounds once again, going back to Wilder. That's uh, Devin Dietrich, the far side corner number eight that came up. As soon as the ball was caught and made the tackle, forced it out of bounds, he is a physical football player on that side. Pick up about four on the play. It's going to bring up second and six. From the 35, empty set. Zipful fires again, going to that far sideline. It's another first down out to the 45-yard line. This time hauled in by Brian Phillips, senior receiver. You see one of the things that they like about Defiance quarterback Zipful. He gets rid of the ball quickly, makes quick decisions. Remember, he is just a sophomore. Played a little bit at the end of the year as a freshman, but this moment is not too big for him so far. So first down. For Defiance, now they'll uh, switch some personnel. A couple of running backs in the backfield with Zipfell. He'll give to one of them, going straight up the middle. Here's Gomez. Gomez trying to burst through. He'll get near midfield and a good positive run on first down. Yeah, you see a little bit of the influence there, the old-style offense that Coach Travis Cooper likes. Remember, he's an offensive guy as well, so he wants to run the football. A little two-back right there, but it came out of a spread look. I don't know if you noticed that, but when they adjusted back into the backfield, they went quick. They didn't give Napoleon a chance to identify it, so they got some power run out of a two-back set instead of lining up in it right away. Second and six, just shy of the midfield stripe. Zipfell gets the snap quickly. He'll get rid of it, and that one nearly intercepted. A nice job reading the route. Trey Rubenstein 
He's got some uh, family business to kind of live up to. Yeah. Trying to live up to his all-Ohio brother. Yeah, Trey would have had six points easily. He could have walked backwards into the end zone had he caught that one. But Coaches the, probably would have uh, uh, preferred <laughs> if he would have ran it into the end zone. He, he could have done whatever he wanted. He would have been celebrating right now. But great recognition. Saw it quickly. The sophomore who had that big catch and run earlier in their offensive drive. You see the athletic ability again of the sophomore. It's going to bring up a third and six now. Zipful, low snap, able to pick it up. Now the broken play at nowhere to go. He's going to be taken out of bounds for a loss. That's one of those things, if you're going to be a shotgun team, you just kind of resign yourself to the fact that maybe once a game you're going to have a bad exchange just happen to happen on their first series of the season. Uh, Devin Dietrich, one of those players to help run him out of bounds. And now that's going to bring up a fourth down here. Back up to a fourth and nine, back at the 46. A little surprised that they didn't go back to the screen game. They had that first play with a huge success with it, then come back with it with the outside receiver. Tried to hit the inside one later in the drive, but it was almost picked off by Rubenstein. Noah Gomez will punt, gets this way, end over end punt. Hits near the 20, heads towards the corner, and is going to roll out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. So Napoleon, for the second time this evening, will be pinned inside their own 20-yard line. That's kind of what we thought it would be early, right? Both teams throwing big right hands early in this football game. A lot of physicality, a lot of intense play. What you want out of a rivalry, right? It is. Our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Defiance and Napoleon is the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Also, the start of football season, Miles, means only one thing. Season 18 of the Sports Report every Friday night, 10 o'clock on WTLW. Join Patrick Hamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long. Fridays at 10, WTLW. And a big stop on first down as it defines defense. Fired up, pushing a running back backwards. Well, it's the old double tight T. The old uh, patented double tight T that Napoleon ran for about a 1,000 years. Uh, that ran that so long that uh, when I was in high school and we played Napoleon, we saw that. So that's very familiar to me. Unfortunately for Napoleon, nobody reached a play side linebacker. Play was made. They only got about two on that. Hey, there's your tight T formation on second down. They'll run out of it going with Andrew Williams trying to break free to the outside. Yeah, a really good job of Christian Camaso running over there, making another play. Abe... Abel Rubio, also the sophomore number 28. He's been a guy that the big lineman for the point have yet to reach using his quickness to run around him. It's third and six coming up here for Napoleon from their own 19-yard line. Quick moving opening period down under four and a half minutes to go. Looks like a cover three look out of the Bulldogs off defensively. Wolf taking his time, has a man open, is able to get rid of the football, finds Caleb Stoner, and Stoner's going to get out near the 30 before he is taken down by Antonio Lopez, but it is a first down for the Wildcats. Yeah, just kind of a five-yard little turn and hitch, and how can he not see Stoner? He's such a huge target. Once he catches it, he's going to rumble for the first down, and you got to talk to Antonio Lopez, the corner on that side. He had deep third responsibility, but you don't keep backpedaling if nobody's threatening vertical. Way too soft of coverage. Took advantage of it. Wolf, good throw, good catch by Stoner. First down for Napoleon. I see a late injury for Defiance. I think it's Andrew Izzeri that uh, kind of holding the shoulder coming off the field. And he kind of went to one of the, I don't know if he went to one of the officials, one of the officials saw him, but after the players were on the field getting ready, they kind of whistled it, uh, say whistled it dead, but kind of held everyone up for a moment. Yeah, it looked Sp like a pinched nerve. Yeah, split backs going back to Williams, trying to break to the outside. He's going to be swarmed over, and he's going to end up having 10 white jerseys to deal with as he gets pushed back to the 25-yard line. Uh, Joey Robinson, number 17, playing the outside to squeeze position. Fought off the block. Williams didn't read it correctly, could have cut it inside. Tried to bounce it. Big play for that defiance defense. A loss of about four is going to bring up second. We'll call it 14, clock rolling near the three-minute mark of our opening quarter.
Couple of receivers, or three receivers coming to the near side now. Wolf able to hold in, fires it again. Rubenstein, flag comes out during the catch. We'll see what this is. I'm wondering if is uh, a they had an illegal off? man downfield. So the officials getting together here. Usually when you see a 50, 60, or 70 number past the line of scrimmage and they're throwing it, something went wrong. That is the case. You heard the voice of, I believe that they said Ralph Cubberly, the uh, white hat referee this evening. Now they're gonna get Gabe Yantis, number 52, is past the line of scrimmage. I don't blame you, Gabe. I always wanted to catch a pass when I played on the line also. He was open too. You know he's back in the huddle telling Wolf, look, uh, wh why didn't you hit me? I was open. Wolf's like, can you never, just block someone, please? Never get off the bench, so. Not for that uh, red team and Lions? That was baseball. That was hmm. different. Well, it's a big penalty. Negates a, another positive play for Napoleon. Puts him behind the sticks in a big way. And the Cats backed up near their own 20. Wolf looking to throw, under pressure again. Able to avoid the first man, has a man open, and then it's dropped. And as is the universal sign on the drop pass, well, what does Trey Rubenstein do? Looks right <laughs> in the hands. Just, the hands let me down, coach. What is this orange thing and why is it coming at me? He had delusions of grandeur. All kinds of open field in front of him. He was going to run and run and run, but forgot the most important thing, the football. Got to take the football, young man. Third and long coming up here for Napoleon. Backed up to their own 20-yard line. They have trips formation to the high side. Inside slot will be uncovered. Wolf rolls to the far side, fires middle of the field. This one is caught as he does a nice job flaring it out to Williams, who will be well shy of the first down, but it does give them a little bit of room for their special teams unit, which will make its way onto the field. Well, you get a little bit of a look on why people like Wolf at quarterback. Rolling to his left, just a little bit of a flick, and that thing was on top of his receiver in a hurry. Sometimes we're blessed with electric arms, and that young man, he was blessed with an electric arm. That football comes out of his hand, and it is a pretty thing. Fourth and seven, we see the punt team. Defines having a little bit of trouble on the last punt with the return. See what happens here. Good snap, a little bit of pressure. High punt, and it's going to be short as it's going to hit. Take a backward bounce. No one for Napoleon was ready for it, and it's going to bounce back a good five yards before it goes out of bounds on the Defiance side of the field, the 45. A huge situation now offensively for Defiance. What looks like to be a plus 11 yard punt. Almost would have been better off going for it. Kind of a weird play, the ball hung in the air and then once it hit that, that huge hop with the back spin on it, if you're hitting your pitching wedge from about 210, that's, that's a great why shot. Why can I do that on the green? That's a great shot, but not if you're trying to punt and get out of a field position. Defiance in Napoleon territory now. Zip fell in the shotgun. I'll have a receiver. It was coming in motion. It stopped. Oh, H back, the lead block as the run will get to the 40 yard line. Yeah, it brought Camaso in motion. Just an ISO through B gap to the strong side. And one of the guys that I really liked watching run as a young player last year was Brogan Castile. You see that he is a guy that enjoys contact. You already saw him make a big play defensively early in this game. He is a guy that gets his shoulders going forward, physical runner. And second and five coming up here for Defiance. Five receiver set. I think we're, we're beginning to see some of Coach Rakes in this offense. Zipful fires. Might not have been the strongest pass, but it does do the job as it gets all the way to the near sideline from the far hash. Hauled in by Jackson Walter. How about Jacob Aguiar from the inside, number 32. That's a hitch route to the outside, and he runs his feet off all the way outside to get on that tackle. Almost beats the corner to that side to get on the hit. Good combination block on the outside, or good combination tackle, rather. Is going to be enough for first down as they move the chains at the 35. As Brett Bosselman, who got there quickly with Aguilar also. 
Point to find, so he'll have to run at least one more play. Everyone looking over the sideline, not sure if a play's been called here. Letting down to four seconds the on the play down. clock, yeah. Take a timeout. Hey, you're better off calling timeout right there instead of rushing something, especially with a sophomore quarterback who doesn't want to make a mistake, will kind of force himself to go faster than what he should. The free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. I can tell you from experience, I have the WOSN app. By the way, I can't tell you had it before I was an employee of WOSN. Oh, look at you, a so free this plug. Isn't, this isn't like corporate synergy. It does come in handy, especially in nights like tonight. It helps out when you got friends all over. They don't call me the mayor for nothing. Friends all over the, the area texting me scores. But for those of you that uh, are the ones I don't have, it's just as easy to pull up the WOSN app. Keep you, you updated uh, on everything going on around the area. Did you get your uh, Sabre water bottle with the merger also? We got the free app got, and we got a water bottle with the merger. Fantastic stuff. Got a three-year contract at 150000 a year, did you? <laughs> I got a firm handshake. One of us won out in the deal. Well, first down coming up here for Defiance. Final seconds of the opening quarter. Zip fell with the handoff. Running straight up the middle. It seems to be Defiance's go-to. We're in the really not quite sure what to do, but it's a good positive gain as Gavino Gomez will get to about the 32, and I believe, partner, that's the way the opening quarter will play out. Hey, how about the block, the trap block by number 64, Caden Allman Jr. He came flying from his right guard position, got the free hit on a defensive lineman that wasn't paying attention. That's when it's fun to play guard. Now we're going to switch ends before Defiance continues on to this drive. No score after one here from Napoleon. Start of the second quarter, we'll see the drive continue on here for Defiance. One that started at the Napoleon 45 after the short punt, quick throw out to the near sideline. And a nice job getting it out to Brian Phillips. Phillips able to fight forward near first down yardage. Yeah, went back to the same formation that they used on their first possession. Little trips look to the field. Threw a quick little screen. Second time they've been able to beat Napoleon with that outside receiver screen. So first down to the 24 yard line. Defiance kind of taking their time here. Coming all the way across from that far sideline to the near hash. One-on-one -on -one coverage to the top side. Zip full with the handoff. Again, moving straight ahead. This time they go to Brogan Castillo, as Miles mentioned, a junior running back. So Castillo and Gomez seem to be the one, too. You throw in a little bit of Anthony Wilder plus Christian Camaso. Could be... Uh, a lot of horses you have to contend with with Defiance. Well, you remember Castile, we had this uh, game a year ago, and he wasn't a factor at all. And then we saw Defiance later in the year, and they were handing it off to this young kid. We're like, who is this guy, right? He was a physical runner. He is a guy that enjoys running into contact. Camaso listed more of a tight end. You can imagine him kind of in a uh, Travis Kelsey type role for what this Defiance offense can do. Out looking for the end zone. This one is going to be broken up with a flag. And that is a no-dotter of the NFL. I'm no football expert, boss, but I believe the rule is with the defensive back. Got to make an effort to look back, and, and I don't think face guarding's legal. Yeah, they're going to get Devin Dietrich, who tried to play the hands. If he just would have peeked over his shoulder a little bit, it would have been a fantastic play, but what a call by Defiance, the second time they ran a quick screen, got good yardage. You know that Napoleon's gonna be ready for it. You fake the screen this time, and you try to hit the vertical off the screen and go. It was a touchdown if the throw was towards the back corner of the end zone. Really a pretty good play by Napoleon to negate that. Well, unlike uh, college in the NFL, where it is a, a spot for, I should say the NFL, right. spot foul would have been deeper. That's just half the distance, so 
damages to the 11-yard line where it's another first down for the Bulldogs. A lot of yelling and screaming. A great crowd here in Napoleon as they go left side, able to run through a tackle once again is Anthony Wilder, and Wilder will get maybe a yard. Anthony Wilder, who as a freshman returns some kicks for this Defiance team, and if you're a freshman and they're putting you back to return kicks, that means that you've got some serious speed. That time he showed some toughness as nobody really blocked in front of him, but yet he was able to get back to close to the line of scrimmage. Second and nine from the 10 yard line. Defiance so will be able to get one more first down. Zip full. Setting up a screen, and that one looks like it was deflected. They yeah, tried to run the tunnel screen. They released the tight end. Camaso up to the safety to block him. Let the defensive line vacate. Let your lineman go up to the second level, run underneath it. It's a play that they tried to get to work at practice earlier in the week, struggled with it. Ziffel has a tough time making that throw over top the hands in his face. Well, third and nine coming up here. Uh, as everyone in defiance looks at the sideline. Looks like they got the uh, armbands for the play calls. You think they don't get it here? It'll be four down territory. Zipful looks to throw. Fires, passes, caught. Knows whether or not he can will his way into the end zone. And now, was he Brian close enough? Phillips with it, I believe. Phillips is going to be short. He is going to have the first down, however. So first and goal from the one. Now a little roll reversal. We saw this last year. It was Napoleon at the five. Couldn't get in. Now what will Defiance do here with the first golden opportunity? Yeah, first and goal to one. If I am Napoleon, I'm looking where 32 lines up. I have a feeling that Defiance is going to run behind Christian Camaso. But how about the job of Ziffel reading the flat defender once he vacated, having enough arm strength to hit that curl route and convert another big first down for Defiance. Yeah, heads up move by the officiating crew as the down box got moved, but it was still on the four. Camaso looks like he's going to be the lead blocker going straight ahead as they come to the right side and running in for the touchdown will be Brogan Castillo. Yeah, pretty good job on that right-hand side. Cave down the defensive line. Camaso got a big block, and then you're going to give it to your big hammer. Brogan Castillo, he just walks into the end zone. Big touchdown for Defiance. Well, Castillo able to get the first score here this 100th edition of the River Rock. And now Defiance on to attempt the extra point. Good snap. This one is no good as it does head to the right. Either kind of got off the tee funny or someone got a hand on it. A good smut kind of good smut it instead of hitting it clean. Unfortunately, that goes over to the right hand side a little bit too far, but don't feel too bad, Defiance, about the extra point. You're up 6 0. Well, impressive drive for Defiance Miles. Started with that short punt, it kind of bounced, went Defiance's way. The 45 yard drive ends with a touchdown run as the Bulldogs have the six nothing lead. We always hear coaches talk about hidden yardage in football games, right? You know, we go back to that punt. It was an 11 yard punt, should have been about a 30, 35 yard punt. That's a yardage that was hidden that was to your advantage. Good kick fielded at about the 12 yard line as the Wedge Busters trying to do what they can, getting out near the 30. And is the uh, best field position of the night for Napoleon as Brett Bosseman will handle it for the Cats. Yeah, Victor Jerkovic, this, uh, the kicker on kickoffs for Defiance, handles the kickoffs and Guzma handles the PATs. Wonder if it, it's a long distance field goal if they switch that up because Jerkovic looks as if he's got a strong leg. It's first and 10 for the Cats from their own 29 yard line. Tight formation, they'll run out of it on first down, trying to get a quick hitter. A good game to get out across the 30, near the 34. Nothing more than the old kind of inside dive. Linebackers going to go one-on-one -on -one with the running back carrying the football, and the offensive linemen are going to go one-on-one -on -one with the guys in front of them. It's an old, hey, we're going to come off the football right at your face kind of play. 
I believe that was Lawson Siebel, number 22, junior running back with a call there. Saw Henry Eggers, one of the uh, tight ends for this team, kind of blocked out of a shoe, hit a guy so hard. Yeah, shades of Keith Byers against Illinois in 84. Except for he wasn't carrying the football. At T formation, they're going to throw out of it, getting it out once again, finding Andrew Williams, and Williams will have what appears to be a first down out near the 39-yard line. Well, I've been so impressed with Blake Wolf. That time, he just a little bit of a foot movement to get himself a window. And did you see what he did with his launch position? Dropped it down to about three-quarter, threw it on the line to the open receiver a year ago. I'm not sure he makes that throw. That's the progress he's made since a year ago. Well, Napoleon, everyone kind of looking over at the coaching staff. They're not sure what exactly is going on, as apparently they were one lineman short. Well, you can go with four on the offensive line, but it is better to go with five. Back to that tight formation, single receiver. And again, they'll give to that first man through. This time, once again, Mason Schweitzer, the ball carrier out across the 40. They'll spot him at the 41, so they'll give him a couple of yards. Well, this big Napoleon offensive line can come off the football. One thing they're struggling with, though, is reaching linebackers. Already Camuso with about his sixth tackle. Come out of the pile with the football, trying to talk to the officials into saying, I stole it. But they're going to have to figure out a way to reach these quick linebackers for defiance if they're going to sustain a run game. Well, second and eight coming up here for Napoleon. This time receiver will go to the far side. A little counter action coming back to Andrew Williams. Not a whole lot of running room. He'll get maybe a yard or so as he gets piled under. Camuso has one of his own teammates kind of over his ankles, and that is the reason why he couldn't get up because he also has uh, Abel Rubio, sophomore linebacker, piled on top of him. Yeah, Rubio is a guy that has not been reached yet. He is dissecting things extremely quickly and then using his feet to get into position. He's got to because his size isn't big, but his quickness has been a huge advantage for him against that large offensive line for Napoleon. And not the uh, standardized linebacker size at 5'6", 159. Wolf under pressure, looking to throw, runs into his own lineman, and that's going to help Defiance come up with a stop. Yeah, Gavin Miller, number two for Defiance, number one on that play. He just kept working and working and working Kept his feet moving and got to the quarterback. Huge sack for the Defiance Bulldogs. It's going to bring up a fourth down. That's going to change what Napoleon will do here. As the offense will come off the field, it looks like the special teams unit will go on. A huge stop for the Defiance defense. You score a touchdown, miss the extra point, you're up 6 nothing. You want to make sure you slam the door on Napoleon, and they did it effectively. Their offense should get good field position again. Yeah, just when it looked like Wolf was going to do something, yeah, going to use his feet for a little bit of room, a little trouble once again on the punt. This one fielded a slightly more cleaner by Wilder and then fell down as he began his trek forward. Yeah, his feet kind of lived up to his last name. They were a little wild on that one. He had his eyes wanting to get up field. His feet wouldn't follow quickly, though. Good thing he caught the football first before he tried to take off. And Defiance will have this at their own 25. Title sponsor for tonight's broadcast. Between Defiance and Napoleon is the State Bank. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Late coverage change by Napoleon playing a little peekaboo. But how about Brogan Castile? He is a physical runner, kind of speed bumps a Napoleon defender for big yardage again. It'll be a first down out across the 35. Look out the 36 yard line. You got to like a running back that when he gets free, doesn't try to run away from the free safety, just looks right at him in through, through the grill and says, I'm going to run you over. Three receivers set this time out of Defiance. Zip full looking. Under pressure. Comes to the near side, fires this one downfield. It's going to be incomplete. 
Good hit applied there after the ball was dropped by Devin Dietrich, number eight for Napoleon, name we've called a couple of times tonight. Well, that's the thing that makes Ziffel so good for this offense and the style of things that they want to do at Defiance. Able to use his feet, tough to bring down because he's going to out quick any defensive lineman that gets free. Extends the play, almost makes a fantastic throw. Wilder just couldn't come up with it. Second and 10 here for Defiance. And we're already nearing the five minute mark of our second quarter. Empty look now out of Defiance. Zipful is gonna keep this one. He's gonna go down back in the 35. Unable to get past Caleb Stoner has come up with another big play. Yeah, Stoner playing that defensive end position, just kind of used his hands on the tackle, navigated to make sure what was going on, saw it was quarterback run all the way, has the strength to shed the big offensive lineman and make the tackle. It's going to bring up a third and 11. Back to a five receiver set. Zipful drops back, trying to roll out, rolls out a one sack, and he can't get out of the way of the second one as he's brought down once again, Mason Schweitzer with a big stop. Now Schweitzer comes from the inside, chases down the quarterback before he can get his shoulder squared up to make a throw. Ziffel's a guy that can make one guy miss as he did with Stoner, but can't get by Schweitzer. So that will bring up a fourth down. And before that, it looks like Napoleon will take a timeout and talk about a couple of things. Timeout on the field. We'll step aside as well. Fourth out coming up here for Defiance. Fourth down coming up here for Defiance. Napoleon, uh, after a timeout, looks like we'll send their uh, special teams unit on Miles. Is that just a thing? Maybe reminding some of the players of a couple things that uh, Defiance has. Another short punt. This one, however, unlike Napoleon, with its short punt, will take a Defiance roll. And this one comes all the way down to the 31-yard line. Well, there's that hidden yardage again. That football hit and then rolled another 12 yards. Napoleon had some bad luck where you hit the top side of the football in the punt and it rolls back towards you. Lost yardage that way. This time Defiance was fortunate with a good roll. So Napoleon will get it at the 31, under four minutes to go, first half. Yeah, Coach Suarez has to have confidence in his offense. Called the timeout so they could have a lot of time on the clock. They don't have to shorten what they want to call. The whole playbook is at their disposable, four minutes left. So here's first down, trying to break to the outside is Devin Dietrich, and he'll get out to the 36. So give him about five yards. Yeah, good uh, block on the outside right there of Deblin. Stoner had a good block as well. You can't go wrong if you're running behind those two big guys. That's a lot of weight. Second and five, I mentioned in our pregame, Napoleon's going to be counting on some of that experienced offensive line here. Early part of the season, again, trying to stretch to the outside. Good run. Finally knifing up field is Williams. He's able to stretch out across the 40, and that's going to be enough for a first down. Yeah, Lawson Seibel, number 22. I guarantee tomorrow when they watch film, they'll run it back and watch him block. Talk about blocking to the whistle. He took his guy and drove him darn near to the numbers. He said, I'm going to block it until they tell me not to. Great effort right there for Napoleon. First down at the 41. What is what is the rule? It's to the... Well, Bobby Bodden always said to the echo of the whistle. That's what I was yep. trying to remember. Yep. First down. Now this time they'll fake the counter. Wolf this time is going to use his feet. He'll get some positive yards. And he's going to be in your first down yardage to midfield. Yeah, 6 3 2 0 oh, 2. That means more than one guy's got to bring him down to the ground. Almost had a sack, but got out of the arms of Jazzin Phillips. Strong quarterback, physical runner. Takes a negative, turns into a huge positive for Napoleon. Second and one from the midfield stripe. A little confusion in the backfield for Napoleon. Hey, good job by Wolf, kind of setting his backs up. He'll give it to the first man through. Ball's loose, 
pile on top of it here. The bottom player's defiance, and it looks like the Bulldogs are gonna have it. I believe that is Garrett Rodenberger, number five, who was on the bottom of the pile. Yeah, it was Christian Camaso who filled from his linebacker position, got underneath the football with his shoulder pads, popped it loose, or else it would have been a first down for Napoleon. Another huge play defensively for that Bulldog defense. That was time authored again by Christian Camaso. So the fumble will give Defiance the football at the Napoleon, or should excuse me, their own 42-yard line. Uh, now if you're Defiance, you start thinking about getting a little greedy here. Tack one on, good field position. Couple of receivers to the far side. Zipfel has it back with him. Looks to throw, fires, has a man. It's gonna be Camaso. Short gain, just getting it to the safety man to the 45. And a tremendous job by that Wildcat secondary. Peekaboo Ziffel, you saw him, he looked upfield, kind of was confused because the safety had bailed right before the snap, went to a cover two look. Ziffel smartly just dumped it off to number 32, got some positive yardage on it. Second and seven now. See what Defiance can do here. Clock under a minute 40 to go in our opening half. See what kind of hurry Defiance is in here. Setting up the screen, and that one's gonna be read pretty well by Napoleon as they run it right towards Jacob Aguilar. Yeah, Aguilar, he has showed out a couple times already in this half. Sees the drop, stops his drop because he knows it's gonna be middle screen and comes and fills. Lyman can't reach him because he's so quick to react. It's third and four for Defiance from their own 48. It might, uh, what, what happens here probably determines how the rest of this plays out. Yeah, you pick it up, you go fast. Otherwise, you're gonna let it milk, see if Napoleon will use another timeout. Zipful under pressure, he's gonna go down back of the 40 yard line. And Noah Leatherman, the inside linebacker, he gets the call all linebackers love. He gets the blitz call, comes through a B-gap, beats the lineman, takes Ziffel down. It's gonna allow Napoleon to call timeout and stop the clock. Now they're gonna have an opportunity to move it. Yeah, on cue, Napoleon, with the timeout, so that uh, give us the opportunity to tell you. You can check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out a broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Well, it makes you wonder with the success of that six-man rush, they brought two backers that time, if Napoleon's gonna say in the second half, you know, we're gonna start dictating terms and coming after you because most of the game's been played with them kind of reacting to what Defiance does. See if they'll start coming after and probably some more pressure to the young sophomore quarterback, Mr. Ziffel. So it will be a fourth and 11. Back at the 41 yard line, punt unit for Defiance under the field. Noah Gomez will do the punting. Get back to him, just one man back there. A little incidental contact as this one is gonna bounce and roll. And Defiance, gonna dend it quickly, Miles. You think if you're Defiance, don't you wanna sit on that maybe for a couple more seconds? Yeah, usually you'll tell him, don't touch it, don't touch it, let her tick off a couple more times, but good job by the white hat right there, right? He reached for his flag, then said, you know what? That wasn't really big contact on the punter. We'll let that play on. I did think that Mason Switzer was pushed into him, went around the block. Surprised the punter didn't roll around on the ground and fall down, right? How many times do you see that? Right. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to get an Academy Award there yep. for your acting. All right, so what do you do here if you're Napoleon from your own 25-yard line, 33 seconds? Now you're going to try and get something on this first snap. Get some positive yardage. If not, then you're going at halftime. Wolf looks to throw, has a man. Surprise, surprise, it's Williams. They go quick now. You got the first down. Start thinking about what you can do. Down to 27 seconds. At some point in time, you're going to have to stretch the field, though. Yeah, just one timeout remaining. They Clock haven't. does stop momentarily while they set everything. Wolf this time fires away to the far side. Pass is caught. Be shy of the first down as they get it out to Rubenstein. That's going to force them to use their last timeout. It's kind of a weird play. 
Didn't know if the officials had really spotted the football and whistled it ready to go. And then the next thing you know, the, the play is going on. Rubenstein catches it and can spin out of bounds and save them that timeout. But good job by that defiance defense, keeping them inside, keeping them inside the sideline so they have to use the timeout. It stops the clock, 15.8 seconds to go. It's going to bring him second and five from the 43-yard line. What surprised you so far in this game already? Mm, that's a good question. I want to say the physicality. Yeah, I thought Defiance has really answered the bell. Everybody saw coming into this game that it would be the physicality of Napoleon up front. But I'd say it's been the quickness and the toughness of that Defiance defense that has been surprising. This Defiance team isn't taking a long to kind of have the identity of its coach, Travis Cooper. It's been uh, kind of a staple of Coach Cooper at his previous stops. A good move by Greewe, the defense coordinator at Defiance. He's got three safeties in the game now, loosened it up. Wolf with a home run ball. This one's going to be incomplete as it heads out of bounds. A little contact on the sideline. It's going to go uncalled, and it's going to bring up third and five. You'll see Defiance stay in the same type of secondary look. They're about 20 yards off the line of scrimmage with three high safeties, just keeping absolutely everything in front. So nine seconds here, Miles. This one, you just let everyone run downfield and chuck it as far as you can. Yeah, it worked for Ben Roethlisberger here a long, long time ago. They stole a game against the Wildcats where it looked like the point was going to win on a last-second touchdown, but... Hail Mary time for Finley and Ben Roethlisberger, and they stole a football game here. I'm unfamiliar with that guy. Ben Roethlisberger, he went to play for some team called Pittsburgh. No, I, I, I remember more his college days at some university in Southern Ohio. No one's open, so Wolf's going to take off. He'll get the first down, so the clock's going to stop momentarily, but Napoleon out of timeouts. They're going to have to hurry up and go, so, and they're going to run it, let it run. That's going to be it. The second left, they can't do anything about it. So that's how the first half will end. Good physical, competitive half of football. 6 nothing defiance at the break. We'll take a timeout. Have the second half for you after this here on WOSN. Six nothing defiance of the lead and getting your set for the second half here, this 100th battle for the River Rock, along with Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. And, uh, partner, what uh, would you see that first half of action here from well, you Napoleon? Remember, a year ago, defiance just simply played harder. And it seems to be the theme in this first half as well. They're just playing at an intensity level that Napoleon is yet to match in this game. The defense for Defiance has been up to the challenge. Look at the look, the work that Christian Camaso and Abel Rubio, the two inside linebackers, have done. They have snuffed out that Napoleon run game, even though the offense of Napoleon has been moving the ball at times, mostly because of the throws of Blake Wolf. The run game has not been what we thought it would be with that big offensive line moving people out of the way. It's been a four-yard gain here, three-yard gain here, and then wait for Wolf to make a throw. It's been the Defiance defense, in my mind, that's been the difference so far. So are you saying that Defiance is playing with an intensity unknown to mankind? <laughs> it is. It's been impressive. It means a lot to the people at Defiance, and I'm sure you know means a lot here to the people at Napoleon. But so far in six quarters of play since Travis Cooper's been the head football coach, it's meant more to the Defiance kids. Just like the SEC? <laughs> the SEC, huh? I mean, it just means more. It does mean that. Now, I'm not saying that uh, they're illegally recruiting like uh, maybe some schools do down in the south, but they are playing hey. extremely hard. Now, what can Napoleon do in the second half? Well, I think you're going to have to lean on the big cannon arm of Blake Wolf a little bit more, go a little bit faster in tempo, and throw early on downs, move the football. When he's moved the pocket, he has been dynamic. See if you can loosen up that defiance defense, then go back to running the football. With NIL, it's not illegal now, by the <laughs> That's way. That's right. They're getting money for real respectable jobs. That's right. Or just by being themselves now that they're allowed to do. So defiance won the toss deferred, so we'll see what they choose to do. I would imagine they'll want the football first. Yeah, if you, if you defer, it's smart to take the football. You don't want to give it up twice. <laughs> it's, teams up. Uh, Came out under the field. I guess both teams kind of came out under the field a little early here. 
as uh, they were through their warm-ups, and then they put the additional three minutes on the clock. So you're going to have to listen to a couple uh, fat old guys yammer on for a couple extra minutes. So we'll see if we can find them. We'll be right back. No, just just joking with you. Well, but. He tested early in his first uh, game as a head football coach at first year, uh, Tyler Swery at halftime. You know, he probably went in and just kind of refocused his football team, went back to their core principles of, of playing physical football. This first drive for them is going to be real important. They're going to have to be the first score this second half because I have a feeling if Defiance gets the first score this second half, it's going to be a real tough task for Napoleon to come back and win this football game. Uh, we were in Columbus Grove on Thursday night, Miles. We saw that uh, conditioning kind of played a factor in the reason why that game got a little close. Columbus Grove had that big lead in Pandora. Gilbo was able to come back. Is that going to be a factor here tonight? Yeah, you're always worried that first game. You, you talk to the kids about making sure you've hydrated all week long because if you try to hydrate the day of the game, it's way too late. That is something you have to do leading up to that football game. Eat your bananas. You can't have enough potassium in you. If you took care of your bodies, it should be okay. However, the scrimmages aren't nearly the same intensity not the same pace as a regular game. Last night we saw a bunch of cramping going on in the second half. Hopefully that doesn't take place again in this second half. I also played in different weather. It is uh, significantly warmer than it was a week ago. And we see the sun going down now as the captain's it, definitely warmer, but uh, usually this first week of the season, it's played uh, close to the surface of the sun, about 150 degrees it feels like. Uh, not nearly the case this year, but still pretty hot. Yeah, pretty warm on the field. We were down there before the game. I don't know if it was the, uh, the 90s as it has been, but teams are all set. So Defiance will get the ball to begin the second half. So never understood this. They shake hands, they talk, they shake hands again, and then off they go. Well... You saw that Defiance will be going towards the scoreboard if you're Napoleon. One thing that you always want when you're at home is to make sure you're going towards the scoreboard in the fourth quarter. That way you can definitely see the time in front of your quarterback instead of having the scoreboard behind them and trying to guess where they're at on the clock. Napoleon has its special teams unit out on the field ready to go. Defiance has its group huddled around. Now they'll make their way out onto the field. It's just about ready for the second half kick here. Our coverage on WOSN continues into Saturday. We'll have a crew, the uh, Battle of Delphus as well between St. John and Jefferson. That's a game that I've done in the past. That is always a highly anticipated game in that community. And a year ago, I did that game with Kevin Peel and it was the first time that they played that game on a new turf down there in the stadium. And that was a great uh, night as both both schools, both communities celebrate the fact that they worked together mm -hmm. on getting turf on that field. Well, apparently they liked it so well, they continued the tradition of playing it on Saturday. I believe Kevin Peel will be making his way back down there again as putting the foot into this one is Devin Dietrich. We are underway with a second half. Short kick, short return. Still be pretty good field position for Defiance as we begin the second half. Yeah, the point try to go with the high pooch kick on the right hand side. See if they can get it by the numbers to the sideline. Kicked a little too far inside the numbers, but yet pins Defiance in and doesn't allow him to set up a return. But if you're Defiance, you're, you're happy with it. Ball on the 35, that's good field position. Quarterback Brez Zepfel not asked to do a lot that opening half. Getting some last minute instructions from his coach and runs over. They'll break the huddle and they're going to open up here with what appears to be three receivers set with an H back and a back in the backfield with Zipfell, who's in a shotgun. And they see him take a look at their wristbands as they get the secondary call from the sideline. Handoff on first down, plowing straight ahead. Brogan Castillo, who's going to get across the 35, given to about the 38, so he'll give him about three yards on first down. They run inside zone, and Castillo, as long as you get him going forward, he's going to get you positive yardage. Noah Leatherman had a big play right before halftime on the sack, came free, slowed up Castillo, or else it would have been a bigger game. Second down here for Defiance. Zipful looks to throw under pressure, trying to step up. Nowhere to go. He's just going to have to eat it and take the sack back to the 30. 
Well, we talked about before the half, if they're going to start bringing more pressure, they brought a six-man pressure again. Two backer blitz, second time they've run it. Second time, Ziffel goes down. Forward progress stopped at the 31. It's going to bring up a third and 14. Yeah, it's Henry Eggers, 81, that gets the big sack. He scrambles Zipfel for a big positive play for the defense of Napoleon. To everyone for defiance, looking over to the sideline, getting the call. Everyone checks the wristbands. Receivers trying to get set. Now if you're Napoleon, keep everything in front. Come up and make the tackle. Get the ball back to your offense. Zipfel rolls. Now the throwback screen. It's set once again. Castillo trying to get to the sideline. He's going to have it. Looks like he's going to tightrope it for a first down. Now what a call by Defiance. See where the spot is. But even if they don't get the first down, heck of a call because you put that Napoleon defense on its heels. Looks like they're going to be a little bit short, but the throwback screen... And it looks like they're going to at least line up to go for it, partner. And no hesitation. That offense stays right on the field. We'll see what uh, happens here. A lot of movement trying to draw them offside. Fourth and two from the 43. Yeah, you got to wonder if this is going to be. No, they're going. Castillo straight ahead. It's going to oh. have the first down. Oh, how about the call of Travis Cooper? Ice in his veins. You think in you his think, own uh, end early in the second half. We'll go for it on fourth down. Wow. Big Doug, time. Think Doug Rakes had anything to do with that right next to him? Yeah, Cooper Coach, going I got a good play. Co Cooper going for it, right? Oh. Cooper going for it, right? Or what? Two friends a long, long time. Their playing days uh, go back to Fairview High School. Doug Rakes, a very successful coach at uh, Fairview, his alma mater, with his uh, son slinging the ball around a little bit. Good right. to uh, see him before the game, chat with him. Wait, right, Mark Cooper went and worked for uh, Rakes uh, about three years ago. There's one kind of scooped up off the ground. It looked like that was going to be an incomplete pass. Instead, Anthony Wilder is going to break free, and he's going to get that all the way down. See where they mark him back at, heading out of bounds. It looks like back at the Napoleon 27-yard line, but still a big gain in the first down. Well, we touched on his speed in the first half, and there it is. You got a chance to see it. You got to get him down on the first tackle attempt because if you don't, he is going to make you pay. He can eat up some turf in a hurry. Big, huge play after that fourth down conversion for Defiance. All momentum on the side of Defiance right now. They'll come out with a three-receiver set. It full in a shotgun handoff again. Castillo right up the middle, drags the defender, and he's going to go down at about the 17 yard line. And nothing more than inside trap by Defiance. And their favorite guy, the pole on the trap, is Caden Allman Jr. And runs the inside trap, pops his running back Castillo, and he is on top of the linebackers before they had a chance to react. That is a first down run. So yeah, all back. coaches like running backs like Castile because they are one-cut guys, and then they are climbing vertical with force. He is a physical runner. First down from the 17. Impressive drive to begin the second half. Defiance trying to add to its one touchdown lead again. They'll go back to Castillo, who's able to get away from the pressure, get inside the 15-yard line. A little bit of... Uh, Talking after the play, after some nice physical work between Stoner and Commissel, shows you the intensity of this rivalry. Two guys not wanting to back down. What, between Napoleon and Defiance, there's guys chirping? A mm, little bit of talk. No. Yeah, just talking about which side of the river goes to who, I think. When we fish, we get that side. Is that, is that how it plays out in your That's mind? That's a big it's rivalry. It's a Figuring out the fishing side. Oh, okay. It's like a West Side Story, but there's a there's a river in it. <laughs> there's a little screen running around is Brian Phillips, and Phillips able to hook that inside the ten. Well, it's a good thing Mason Switzer, number eighteen for Napoleon, came back from the far side to get on that tackle. Also, been another touchdown for Defiance. Third time that they've run that little jailbreak middle screen. It looks like it's going to pop, going to be a big play for them moving forward. And it was a first down for the Bulldogs, first and goal from the seven. 
and I said it, and now I can't get nothing but thoughts of like I, I'm snapping and the I, sharks and the jets. Yeah, well, it's bulldogs and wildcats. Oh, okay. But I, I guess it'd be a uh, Castillo waiting for the blocks to form. River Rock story then. Now, be honest. Have you ac actually seen West Side Story? I have not. You haven't seen it? Wow. You're definitely not a Jet. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone has a VHS copy, send it up to uh, Randy Roberts, please. Second goal from the four. Uh, that rollout, a good design play getting into the open space. Anthony Wilder with a touchdown reception. Yeah, they're going to go for two here to try to extend it since they missed the extra point early. Good job by Ziffo recognizing it, getting his coaches together, finding out what the play is. But better design is you touchdown partner. Wilder started on the far side, comes across the formation into the flat. Nobody around him. Katie Bardador, an easy score. Nice pass by Ziffel not to overthink it. What an impressive four and a half minute drive to begin the second half. Uh, Defiance will motion out of its formation here. They'll change their mind. Zipful in the two point looking to throw is all sorts of time. Rolls out, pass is going to be deflected back to him. Flag did come out on the play as well, so we'll let all kinds the, of things went on. <laughs> we'll let the men in stripes sort this one out. It, it was a as a play out of uh, not wasn't not going to matter anyhow because they snapped it before they were set. The near side official recognized it. They're going to decline yeah. it and it's going to stay at twelve nothing. And by the way, you cannot throw the pass twice forward if you're the quarterback. So our officials getting together, making sure they're on the same page here. So they get a few minutes of TV time. Now we're going to talk about it. Hey, so uh, where's that restaurant at down the other end of town? No, oh, I didn't see the holding defensively. That's a huge, costly error by Napoleon. Going to give Defiance another shot at this. Yeah, the official working each side line, each threw a flag. And so that's what now Coach Swery for Napoleon, a little upset. He's having an animated conversation. Well, the near side official just told him that there was only one penalty. It was against Defiance. So he was surprised by the secondary call. Let's see if they shift into a two-back set again. Kamaso to the right. He's the inside slot. Zipful looking for the corner to Camaso. And did he keep his foot in? He did for the two point conversion. That's nothing more than a slot fade with a fake screen on the outside. Got the safety to bite. And how about the fancy footwork of Christian Camaso? You talk about dancing on West Side Story. He's definitely a shark or a jet with those feet. That might be the prettiest two point conversion we see all year. And makes it 14 nothing defiance here as we step aside on WOSN. Fourteen nothing now defiance with the lead uh, over Napoleon. What an impressive uh, drive and what an impressive two point conversion. That'll be the prettiest catch Christian Camaso makes all year. Well, I'll go back to the impressive call on fourth and two. Kickoff fielded at the 15-yard line. For Napoleon, ball's, ball's going to pop loose. And Brett Bosselman took a big hit. Well, oh, that would have been just sayonara had that been recovered by defiance. But good job, Bosselman was... Eager and quick to jump on that football might have saved the day or else it would have been big time. Woe is me for Napoleon as Defiance would have had the ball in strike position again. Cats have it at their own 23-yard line. I'll well, see if Napoleon gets a little impatient here, stays with their game plan. Wolf nowhere to go, and he's going to 
be dropped back at the 15. First one in there. The big Gavino, Gavino Gomez. Gavino Gomez, one-on-one, -on -one, up to the task. Takes the big wolf down to the ground. Kind of a weird play. Too many receivers running away from the quarterback. I don't know if it was a misunderstanding on the route combination, but he rolled left, only one receiver. Three receivers were rolling away from him. Nobody to throw to. Well, big loss. Set up a second and 18 back of the 15 yard line. Wolf, can't find anyone, takes off running again. This time it will be positive yardage. So Gomez is going to meet him again, but this time out at the 25-yard line. So it is going to be a third and somewhat manageable as it gets some of the yards back. Yeah, kind of like a, you remember Matty Mock years ago down in Kent? That's what it kind of looked like, right? Had one read on the move, sees a little bit of a hole. I'm going to take it and use my feet. Why not? You're 202 pounds. You're going to deliver a thump. Huge third down in this third quarter for Napoleon. Third and eight coming up here for the Wildcats. Wolf with a fake, looking to throw, fires it. Has a man, middle of the field, first down and more. Getting to the outside, Rubenstein, and he's going to get a big gain out to the 46-yard line. Now, Rubenstein is the guy that they want to get the ball to. He's come up a little bit slow, though. I think he's got a little bit of an ankle or a cramp. Get him out of the field, but... And Wolf again, he's the guy that makes the big play for this Napoleon offense. Gets the play from the sideline, he's gonna run it in. They've got to answer after that second touchdown by Defiance. Picked up about 21 yards. Two receivers, couple of H-backs back in the backfield. Wolf sets to throw, this one incomplete. Gomez had a chance at it, as did Henry Eggers of Napoleon. Well, Gomez read it so quickly that he actually overran it. If he slowed a plate a little bit, he's got an interception. He's running that in for a touchdown, but he overplayed it and actually got his back arm to deflect it. Great job by the big Gavino. Second and 10 from the 46-yard line. Single receivers, they go to that tight formation. The split backs, Defiance not fooled. Nowhere to go for Williams that time. Andrew Azari, good to see him in the game. Remember, he left the game with a stinger early. Mm -hmm. Came back in right there. Took on the inside block, trying to kick him out wrong. Armed it, played underneath it, and then made the tackle. That's one of those you're watching tomorrow. Coach Greeley is going to run it back and say, that's unbelievable defensive line play. Third and nine, already under the halfway mark of this third quarter. Wolf, far side, rolls out, trying to throw a man open, just led his receiver too far in Devin Dietrich. That is very affected that one as well. He did a good job of bumping the receiver, delaying the route. It's not like the NFL. You can hit receivers as they're trying to release as long as the ball hasn't been thrown. Held the receiver up long enough. Forced a tough throw by Wolf, was not able to move it in the right spot. And it looks like another punt situation for Napoleon. Yeah, fourth down coming up here. Napoleon taking a minute with its special teams coach. Make sure they get 11 on the field. Brett Bosselman will do the punting. He's backing up at his own 34 yard line. A momentary hush here. As Bosselman gets this one away. End over end kick, heads out of bounds. And yeah, it's not going to be a big punt. See where this gets marked at as official will begin to march forward. And he will stop at the 40 yard line. Yeah, it's the white hat that tells him where to stop. We learned that last year. Remember, we were talking to officials because mm -hmm. we always wondered, why does the guy keep walking? Why does he just go to the spot? It's not his job to see where it's spot. The white hat tells him where it went out. He looks at him, raises his hand, tell him, go ahead and stop right there. All, all I could see in my mind, again, I know we talked about this last year, is the, the price is right. <laughs> the price the is yodeler. the yodeler. Yep. Why does he keep going up the mountain? First to 10 for the Bulldogs from their own 40-yard line. They found something that works. They're going to keep going. 
Here's Castile breaking to the outside. He's going to be in Napoleon territory. Oh, shades of sweetness from Chicago. Walter Payton, how about that stiff arm right there? You're going to come tackle me. I know you're not because I got the long arm that's going to knock you down. Brogan Castile rumbling for another first down. And he'll get 20 yards to the Napoleon 40. Partner, you got to feel like if uh, the Bulldogs stick one in here, could be the death knell early on for Napoleon in this one. Well, they've just been the physical group. They have dominated the physicality, and they deserve to be up top. Now Zipfield, he's going to show off his arm, throwing downfield. That one's going to be incomplete. Had a trip formation that way, just uncorked it. A little too far for everyone. That was a play they broke out in early in the or first quarter. The uh, fake screen, then go. That time, Napoleon had adjusted their secondary, rotated coverage, keeping everything in front. Well played by that well-schooled Napoleon defense. Well, as we saw the other night, it looks like the, uh, the weather playing a factor. So we got an injured player. While they take a look at him, we'll step aside here in WOSN. Henry Eggers, the uh, injured player for Napoleon. Looks like he was able to get up and uh, make his way back onto the field. I want to tell you that our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Defiance and Napoleon is the State Bank, invested in Northwest West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Second and 10 coming up here for the Bulldogs from the Napoleon 40. And again, back to the ground after that first down incomplete pass. And it's Castillo getting five more yards to the 35. Now, good job up front. You're starting to see the coming off the football by this defiance off line, uh, offensive lineman, Huffman, Huffman Valley, Ariola, and Allman Jr. getting it done. Huffman, Huffman, and Valley. That's not a law firm anywhere. It sure is. Caden Allman. Guys had a couple really big blocks on traps. So Castillo will be marked back at the 36 yard line, so we'll give him four. So third down and six throw is going to be about a yard shy as the pass is complete. Yeah, Preston Speaks comes up and makes the tackle. And that's a good thing because Wilder gets free. He's a guy that can scoot. Like the concept, get the guy with quick speed outside by himself against a linebacker type, breaks the tackle, and he's going to keep running. Yeah, Defiance being the aggressor once again. Offense stays on the field. Well, you went for it on fourth and two on your own end. Why wouldn't you not go here? Yeah, fourth and a little closer, trying to put this one away in the third quarter. Straight ahead, first down yardage and more as they'll get down inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. Man, you got a physical dude like Brogan Castile. Go for it on every fourth and short, right? He likes, makes you look smart as a coach. Well, first down to the 25-yard line. It's defiance continues to just move, chews up that clock inside of three minutes to go already in our third quarter. Oh, Defiance goes and scores here on this drive. Everybody in white over on that far sideline is just going to explode. You'll see a bunch of popcorn popping. So three receivers set. They're gonna run right out of that. How about straight ahead once again as why not? Why would you want to do anything different? Well, you remember early in the game, those were three and four yard runs, right? It's funny how when you wear down your opposition, those suddenly turn to eight and nine yard runs and guys like Brogan Castile, they start smelling it. They start loving it. And they keep converting those big plays into even bigger ones. Yeah, and it looks like a timeout's gonna be taken here as Napoleon just wants to regroup. Yeah, kind of a good move, right? Call timeout, let your guys get some water, regroup, because your coach swear you understand how important this drive is. Two scores down, still time enough to come back and win it. Down three scores. Uh-oh, now you've got a lot of work in front of you. Yeah, it's going to be tough, especially you said time beginning to, to be a factor. You're looking at needing if... You hold two touchdowns, you said, but you give one up here, needing three scores in basically the fourth quarter to do it. Well, you start thinking about possessions that you're going to have in the fourth quarter. You're almost going to have to score on every single possession that you have if you're down by three scores. Defiance being able to hold on to the football is kind of keeping this two possessions a quarter. I'm impressed with the way they held the football about four and a half minutes. March down the field and score the opening possession of the half. 
doing it again here inside the red zone. They've got a second and about three coming up from the 18-yard line. And if you're defiance, don't overthink it here. You're beating up Napoleon between the tackles with Castile. Stay with that concept. Use Camaso in a motion. Bring him along as the lead thumper. Keep hammering that Wildcat defense. That is exactly what they'll do, moving forward near the 10-yard line. Yeah, you better bring some shoulder pads and a buddy if you're going to bring Castile down to the ground. You saw an arm tackle right there. That's not going to get it done. He might break your arm. He runs so hard. It's another first down. They're going to call it first and uh, is it first and goal? The ball spotted kind of right yeah. on the 10 yard line. Yeah, they didn't set the far chain up, so it is going to be first and goal. Because if, if they get a first down, it would be a touchdown. See where the ball is at. Once the ball breaks the goal line, it is a touchdown. Thank you. I didn't bring my football for dummies book with me today. so <laughs> It's in the car. I saw it. Hand off right side. Still moving forward. Even when someone's got Castillo by the ankles, he's still moving forward. Yeah, they met him at about the 10-yard line, and he just kept inching forward, dragging people all the way down to about the six and a half. To, to go back to your comment on books, someone got me a nice book bag with a WOSN logo, so I figured I'd better put, you know, put a book in it to look like I know what I Is it I, the first one that you own that you haven't colored in? It's very true. It's the first book bag I've had books in, too, as well. Under a minute to go in our third quarter. Defiance in no hurry. I'll have to snap the ball at least one more time here. Second and goal from the seven. Ziffel rolls out on the fake. Looking. Can throw. And a butt commiso. I stand corrected, Miles. That two point, not the most impressive catch of the night. Oh, shades of Dwight Clark in the NFC title game. Ziffel rolling right, waiting, waiting. He was going to hit Wilder, but it was played really well by Eggers. Throws it to the back of the end zone. How about Christian Camaso with a little ballerina twist and a one-hand catch. Unbelievable football play for Defiance High School. Bulldogs will now attempt the extra point here. Trying to make this one 21 to nothing. Snaps good. Kick on its way. And the kick is good. Oh, have a night, Christian Camaso. What a move on the two point on the previous touchdown. And what a catch in the back of the end zone. All Bulldogs tonight here against Napoleon. Nothing. Defiance now with a lead over Napoleon. What a catch. Christian Camaso, little dance. Stay in the back of the end zone. Hauls in the seven yard touchdown pass. And the Bulldogs extended its lead. Going back to the last seven quarters, these two have met. It's been 28 nothing Defiance. As the kick return comes out near the 30 yard line. Uh, now you're getting to the time of the game with 34 seconds left in the third quarter. You really have to start thinking about how many possessions you're going to have left in this game. It's going to take a, a turnover by your defensive side if you're Napoleon and a lot of good offense from here on out if you're going to steal this football game down 21 nothing. Cats coming out, a couple of receivers, split backs as well. Get rid of it in a hurry, trying to get some open space to Williams. Makes one man miss, still dancing around, trying to take on a whole lot of defenders. And finally, he'll go down, but not without a fight near the 34-yard line. Yeah, inside bubble, he was uncovered. Just going to throw the quick now principle. If you're an inside receiver, is uncovered. Get it out to him. Positive yards because of the really good feet. Like the athleticism of Williams. Napoleon seems to be in no hurry to get one more playoff as the seconds tick away. They head to the sideline, so it looks like that is how the third quarter will end. So all defiance are early on as the 100th edition of the River Rock will come to the fourth quarter when we return.
Napoleon trying to make something happen here, Miles. They're going to have a little bit of work to do. Cats down three scores. We begin the fourth quarter. They'll start on the ground here, second and five. Run's going to get a little yardage now, a little bit of extracurricular activity. You got to like the cell job in their defiance, young man. That falls down right next to the ref looking up for a flag. That's the only time they've been able to reach Abel, and they took him to the ground. It was Yantis that knocked him down right in front of the official. Official said, guys, let's take it easy. But the play was made by Gavino Gomez again for defiance. Turned it back in. Huge third down and one. The point got to come up with it. If they don't get it on third down, you got to believe they'll go for it on fourth. Oh, absolutely. Third down. They'll give to the first man through, and it will be a first down as they'll feed it to Mason Schweitzer. Well, he can't score a 22-point touchdown, so just put together good play after good play. Got to get that first touchdown, then think about what you got to do from there, but... One thing that has to happen from here on out is a little more speed getting that play into the huddle, in and out for Napoleon. First down from the 40. Napoleon coming out with three receivers. As Wolf will roll out, looking to throw. Cox's his arm a couple of times, gets rid of it. Here's Williams working the sideline. Still on his feet as he's in Defiance territory, and it'll be a first down at the 43-yard line. Now Williams is a threat when he has the ball in his hands. Ran a flood route to that side. He was the second receiver on the flood. Hit it to him at about 10 yards. Used his feet to pick up some more. He's yeah, a guy that had 17 catches a year ago. Big target. Yeah, ends up getting 17 there. Napoleon trying to hurry here as we near the 10 and a half minute mark. And you can score here, Miles, but like you said, as they'll get it out once again to Williams. She makes a man miss. Working the sideline. Trying to go oh, what he can get. Finally, he's going to be thrown out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. That's the same play they ran a moment ago to the other side. Williams is open because the flat defender that side keeps sucking up on the short route. Easy pitch and catch by Wolf. And he's going to be spotted back at the 15. So trying to get yardage in chunks. As you can score here, but if you take your time, it kind of limits what you can do. Because you'll have to get a couple of stops yet. Hey, Garrett Rodenberger with the aggressive tackle on Williams out of bounds. Thought maybe it might draw a flag. Wolf looking end zone. He's going to come out and incomplete. Looking for the corner pylon, Trey Rubenstein. Yeah, Rubenstein kind of was running away from his quarterback. He had an opportunity to flatten it out to the sideline and turn his chest. Didn't expose his number to the quarterback, so he flo floated it up to him to run under. That's better served if it's more of a line to the outside shoulder so you can catch it and move. Well, second and 10 now coming up here for Napoleon. Back steps up next to Wolf. Wolf rolling out. This time he's going to keep it. And hops over his own lineman as he had a lineman kind of down on one knee as the uh, last thing Isaac Lehman was expecting, see his quarterback come flying over his shoulders. Yeah, he had to take off with it because of Brian Phillips' safety for defense. Finally recognized that flood route. He came up and took away Williams. Wolf was going to hit him again, but that time elected to take it and run. Several times this uh, game, he has used his feet to his advantage. It's third and two. Split backs trying to get that first down. Pyle's going to move. They're going to get the first down and more. As it looks like Napoleon's going to get in and score. They'll have to separate the uh, pile before we can tell you that it's Mason Schweitzer ends up scoring the touchdown. Yeah, best drive of the night. Utilized the pass first and got the run in a timely fashion. They get their first touchdown of the night. Gives them an opportunity with nine minutes left. They can still win this football game. So Cal Bickle, sophomore, on to attempt the extra point. Brett Bossaman will do the holdings. The kick is on its way from Bickle, and he will knock through the extra point. Unbelievable job by Bossaman. He got that ball when it was past him, caught it, and brought it back and got it set so the kick could get down and up through the uprights. Bossaman, fantastic play as a holder. So 21-7, Napoleon able to get on the board for the first time in a couple of years against Defiance. Now we'll see what their defense can do after this.
El Miles, Napoleon got the first part done, got a touchdown there, 21 7 or score, 9.43 to go. Now the second part is got to get a stop. Uh, if you're Defiance, though, you got to be alert for the ball being on the ground. Try to steal possession. Maybe a surprise onside kick. So Dietrich will do the kicking here. This one is going to be whistled uh, dead before we start. Yeah, I think every official on the field blew their whistle. And Defiance looking for maybe. I, th I think they recognize various in the special teams. Yeah, the ball was teed up a little bit funny. So every you know, if you're a special teams coach and you're looking at that, you see the ball teed up funny. You're like, oh, this is going to be onside kick. Maybe let's call timeout, discuss things, make sure you got people lined up correctly. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership commitment to others and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. John Reed, long time football coach, very successful coach at Coldwater. Are we allowed to nominate our crew tonight? Because our crew has been absolutely fantastic. They've done a great Says job. coaches, did any of them coach us up? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, think that counts. If you work with us, you got to coach us that's, up. That's very true. Great job by our crew, as always, getting some fantastic shots for you guys. Even Curtis down there mm -hmm. using, getting some shots that we can use. This is a squib kick. That's what they're going to go with. This one is going to hit, stays in bounds. Good play made by Defiance. We'll have to let the lung man get up before we can. Uh... There's that guy again, Gavino Gomez, yep. always making a smart play. Recognized the pooch, came up, didn't panic. First thing you got to do is catch it. So we don't want to bore you with the details of how games make it on television, but it's safe to say that uh, early this afternoon, the uh, way this was done had changed and uh, give our crew tons of props for putting it together. I had to scramble around to uh, find some camera ops mm -hmm. and able to bring you our football game. So uh, thank them and everyone at WOSN of our uh, Kind of putting this together is uh, everyone, I think, outside of you and me, partner, we're doing what we normally do, but I think everyone else kind of in a different spot than where they intended to be earlier in the day. But uh, glad that we can get this on as Defiance will run here on first down. And I'm pretty sure Defiance has just one objective here with nine and a half minutes to go. Yeah, you got to get a three and out here. Keep as much time for your offense. Don't let Defiance... Score, without a doubt. Don't let them score, but don't let them put together a couple drives and bleed this clock out. A couple first downs, bleed the clock out. That was a good tackle. Made that time to stop the inside run for the first time in a while. Lawson Seibel got in there and made the tackle for Napoleon. Now, for what it's worth, Cats do have all three of their tie bounce as well. Quick throw out to the flat. That's about the uh, only throw I imagine that Defines will be making at any point. So Phillips will have it. Now the question is, did Phillips go out of bounds? Because that might be the next thing that uh, gets uh, t talked and coached about on that visiting sideline. Well, all the hometown officials were yelling hold. They thought Andrew Azari had a hold on the perimeter on that quick screen, and he was blocking aggressively. I will say that, but I will never say someone's holding as a former lineman. So third and one coming up here. Ball at the 37-yard line. There's a run straight ahead again. But you need a yard, call Castillo. He'll get it. You got a little bit more than that out across the 40 to the 41. Yeah, at some point in time, if it's a short yardage situation, you know Castillo's going to get it. You're going to have to blitz that inside backer to that gap because he is getting across the line of scrimmage before the back backer even has a chance to fill that hole. I want to tell you one more time that our title sponsor of our game tonight between Defiance and Napoleon is the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio, with skilled objective and caring financial planners. I want to thank State Bank being with us tonight, both our title sponsor and our pregame sponsor as well. First down run, there's Castillo. Check that. That was Castillo, thought that was. The, the one and the four sometimes get a little confusing. Sometimes, some of us just don't know our numbers that well. <laughs> well, the one thing you do know well if you're Defiance is you can't go wrong putting the ball in Castile's hands. He has been a fall forward guy all night long, or, or really all 
career long at defense, right? Mm -hmm. Every time we've seen him, he's been an impressive physical runner. Well, second and five, five yard gain gets out to the 46. For Defiance, the biggest thing they can do is just tick, 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 tick. Play clock down under five seconds. Quickly get it out again to Brian Phillips. Phillips not getting near the sideline this time. He's going to go out of, or he's going to go down at the Napoleon side of the field, the 49, as Bossman's going to bring him down. But still going to be enough for a first down. Yeah, it was wilder that time for Defiance that sealed the edge on the quick screen. Napoleon again was screaming for an inside hole, but officials are going to let you do some things on the inside. If your hands get outside the frame, they'll call you for the hole. But if you're grabbing the breastplate, working your hands and moving your feet, they're not going to call that. And that's exactly what he was doing. This next snap is going to come with under seven minutes to go in the contest. So, Coach, if you're Napoleon, when you start thinking about using those timeouts you got? As soon as possible, if you get another first down, you got to keep as much time on that clock. And there's a minimal gain that time. As Defiance will change it up, going with Wilder there on first down. As Noah Leatherman again, he has showed up big time in this game. Number 34 for Napoleon, making the play at the line of scrimmage. One of the few times they got Castile to go backwards. So second and nine. As everyone stays on the field. It's been the uh, kind of the, the same grouping for Defiance. So not a lot of changes, not a lot of substitutions. No, but they move people around nonstop. You take a look at Kamaso. He's lined up in four different spots. Goes that bubble screen again. Finding that target. That's Ben Phillips. And Phillips is going to have a first down at about the 36-yard line. Yeah, Phillips with the middle tunnel screen, a jailbreak variety. Gets behind the line, lineman as they release. Real important to get that outside block to get him free, and it was well done by Wilder. This is a defiance team that is impressive the way they've answered after that touchdown by Napoleon. The officials will hold up play to let the chains Get set, clock beginning to run once again. Stefines might just try to stick this one in the end zone, put this one away. Camaso this time the motion man, he'll be the lead blocker. As Castillo moves forward, he'll get to about the 31, 32 yard line. They brought double backer blitz inside out of that 4-3 uh, look, but Castillo recognized it and kind of bounced to backside B. Now we wondered when the timeouts would come. Well, there's one of them right there. It's timeout on the field. We'll step aside as well as Defiance looks to put this one away. Second down coming up here for Defiance. Napoleon starting to use those timeouts, trying to uh, save as much time as they can on the clock, which right now is 524 yet to go. They've made their empty adjustment. Three down linemen, eight guys ready to drop in the secondary coverage. And they're going to refill now. And Castillo's going to come back and join quarterback in the backfield. He gets the call, plowing straight ahead again inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. And Castillo was met by Speaks at the line of scrimmage, but it didn't bother him. He just kept moving forward. It's going to set up another workable third down. And this has got to be four down territory for your defiance, right? You could go ahead and seal the win mm -hmm. if you pick up this first down here. Well, they changed the timeouts on the scoreboard, so Napoleon just one timeout remaining. I think you would try to maybe get a stop here, think, or maybe hold them on third, think about using it for fourth. Because if Defiance gets one more, and running out of territory, but one more first down here, the four and a half minute mark, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, it's not going to matter, though, as the first down run is going to be completed. That'll stop the clock momentarily as Wilder's going to get inside the 25 down to the 23. Now, the time they use Castile as the lead thumper for Wilder, you can kind of see what was coming because he was... A little bit of a step in front of the quarterback, Ziffel. Knew uh, Wilder was going to get the ball. Castillo's like, what? Someone else is carrying it for a while? 
But you like Wilder with the ball in his hands. You see how quickly he attacks the line of scrimmage. This is going to be a defiance team partner that is going to get better mm -hmm. as the season goes on. They got some special parts that are young. A three and seven a year ago, lost a couple of close ones. Zipfel with some problems holding on to that snap, does the smart thing there. Officials are going to say that the ground caused the fumble. It's going to draw the ire of a lot of Napoleon players as they thought there was a scoop and score coming. Yeah, it was going to be a scoop and score. Bad thing, though, is the official is right. He was down. Second time in this football game that Defiance has had a bad snap. That's the problem with being a shotgun sometimes. Bad snaps. They will make you hold your breath. The yeah, loss is going to come all the way back to the 30-yard line. It's going to be second and about 17. Tick, 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 tick. Yeah, 320 on the clock when they broke the huddle. He's going to take this down every second he can, snap it within five. And yeah, snap will come under the three-minute mark. Nine on the play clock. Little trouble with that one, too, but he manages to get the handoff to Castillo. Runs right into the line. He's going to be pushed back after getting to the 27. We're waiting to see. There is the call, and it looks like Napoleon will take its final timeout. So final stoppage for Napoleon here with 2.46 to go. Yeah, Coach Swery, you talk about getting that football out. The first guy gets a chance to tackle, hold them up. Second guys get in there, try to strip that football out. You've got to get some kind of miracle turnover if you're gonna win this football game from here on out. Third down, and if you're Defiance, don't get cute. Just keep running the football. You know your opponent, Napoleon, is out of timeouts. Run the football, keep that clock running. Throw in the football. Sometimes you're like, oh, we could score a touchdown doing it. But if you get intercepted, you get a sack, strip fumble, it's not worth it. Just keep moving that clock. Give the ball to Castile, run that football. Now it is a third and long. It'll be third and 14. I don't care. I, I got the hammer. I'm up by 14 points. We're going to keep running the football. Do you mean that in the Castile way or in the... That's a good nickname for him, the hammer, Brandon Castile. He is a thumper. Uh, Camaso's going to line up in the H-back to the left. Keep an eye on him being the lead guy. So you'll see him come in motion. And lined up to the right side. Now he's going to double back to the left, trying to be that lead blocker. He's trying to get to the outside flag coming in as well. So will get to the 20 by Castillo. We'll see what the penalty is as it stops clock 2.37 to go. I know exactly what the Napoleon coaches are thinking. They're like, now you call the hold? We've been asking you on the quick screens all night long. And at the end of the game, he finally called the hold while the hand was outside the framework, and that's going to draw it. Now the coach is where you're going to try and figure out, do you go fourth down here, fourth and about nine, or you back them way up on third down? I take the fourth down because it's going to get you a play and you want to keep that clock where it's at. Third down allows them to run more clock. So having an extended discussion here, the officials, as see the hold, they will decline it. So it is going to bring up a fourth down. Now, since it's fourth down in your defiance, do you want to go ahead and throw the football? Because the, the clock's going to stop on change of possession anyhow. Fourth down here, go ahead and throw it. So fourth, and we'll call it eight from the 20-yard line. Now it's going to be man coverage across the board, so look for him to bring some kind of pressure. Free safety in the middle field, but he is awfully tight at about nine yards. If you want a quick vertical, you got Camaso inside, one-on-one. -on -one. Zipfel gets the shotgun snap, looks to throw. He is going for the end zone, caught for the touchdown. Well, how about the big-time throw by the super sophomore? Drops it into a bucket on the fade route of a bunch set. Ooh, the backbreaker delivered by now Brian Ziffel. Brian Phillips, who's had a big second half, some of those screens, and they needed first downs. Now the backbreaking touchdown as defiance for the first time since 2000 and 2001. 
appears to be on its way to getting back-to-back -back wins in the battle for the River Rock. The Brez Bomber with the big-time throw to the corner. All it's left to do here is the extra point. As the extra point, a little extra oomph put into that one as the extra point is good. Touchdown to salt it away for Defiance. 28-7, we'll take a break here in WLSN. Twenty-eight seven defiance with the lead over Napoleon and partner. I don't know if I've seen a game, especially working here with you the last couple of years. The prettiest touchdowns scored tonight. Yeah, like throw of the night right there by Brez Ziffel, right? That was a sweet little fade. The throw of the night, the cat but the, the couple of catches by Kamazo. One for the touchdown, one for the two point. We'll see what Napoleon will do here as Bryce Martinez is senior. Get this return to the 20. 2.07 to go, down three scores. As Antonio Lopez, the junior, number 12, running down, did a great job on special teams, didn't overrun it. Pitter pattered his feet, kept the returner inside of him. See what Napoleon will do here, and we might uh, have taken the wraps off. A few new players. Oh, here comes Blake Wolf, kind of the last one to leave the sideline. So Defiance will start 1-0, Napoleon going to 0-1. And, and for those maybe not familiar with Defiance or the WBL, your only non-league game of the season. Yeah, they take the football serious in the WBL. Everybody plays each other and everybody plays in a physical manner. The WBL is no joke. I understand that uh, Van Wert taking it to Brian at a game that you will be able to see right here in WOSN later this week through our new partnership with the Golden Bear Sports Network. Yeah, Van Wert, state champs two years ago last year, made another deep run, lost to Port Clinton, but it's a fantastic program. Looks like they just reloaded yet again. So Napoleon trying to make something happen here. The final moments, Rolf, take off and run, looking for some room near a first down. Sure, if Coach Swery's going to like the fact he took a hit there. Now you see, it was hitting him again, Christian Camaso. And they'll spike this one. Stops clock with a minute 49 to go. Napoleon's going to play this one all the way out to the end. Very fortunate the officials went ahead and said that was a forward pass. Do you see how he threw it behind him? Didn't step away from the center and threw it into the ground. If you do that, that's actually a lateral. It becomes a live football. But what official is going to call at this point in the game? Now for Napoleon, speaking of uh, the non-conference, doesn't get any easier for them as uh, they'll take on a Liberty Center team. By the way, made some noise a year ago. Looks to be loaded again. This one towards the sideline. This one's going to be incomplete. It's going to bring up a third down. Well, you know it's a prideful program. It's a physical program when on the back of their shirts it says, hit Liberty, hit, right? It's a carbon copy every year, but you got to respect it because that is a physical group. It's going to be a tough ask coming off of a loss like this to play Liberty Center in another rivalry game for Napoleon to mount up and be physical again and try to beat Liberty Center. The Liberty Center, by the way, opened the year with a shutout win over Tenora. So they seem to be rolling once again. Wolf on third down, rolls to the far side. He's going to fire this one. Has a man open. And so get it out to Andrew Williams. Williams had an impressive day tonight. About the sixth time they've run that flood concept. About four times they've hit Williams with it. I'm trying to make something happen here now. Down to the Defiance 45. Now the team will have to reset. As Williams out of bounds, stops clock with a minute 37 to go. Here's the pressure again, Wolf. Take off, plenty of room, trying to cut back. And a nice job in the open field. And I believe that was Christian Camaso able to bring him down, not before he picks up another first down. He had two great athletes in the middle of the field working against each other. Camaso just got that paw up, got the foot of Wolf, or else Wolf might have scored. Wolf looking, 
Throws this one up towards the end zone. It's going to be intercepted. And that is going to do it. As the last ditch effort is picked off. Flag on the field. This one might be back on the return. It's Antonio Lopez with the interception. Flag back at the 20-yard line, so they'll have to sort this one out. I think they're going to get a block in the back on the return. But Lopez does a good job of staying a good leverage with the receiver, kind of underthrown by Wolf. Easy interception as he turned and saw the ball coming down. High pointed it really well. So well done by our official with the explanation. Defiance probably doesn't care a lot about the penalty. They cared about the turnover as they will just take three knees and head back on state, or almost said state route, Route 24 with a piece of hardware. Well, it's going to be a nice 17 mile trip back home. If you're Coach Cooper, you want to start looking around to see if someone is grabbing a cooler of ice water to dump on you. That'd be welcomed in the uh, heat of the evening. There's two coaches, right? One coach that says, oh, I don't want to get dumped on. The other one kind of says, eh, let me see where it's at and pretend I don't see it. And he gets dunked on. But well deserved. This was a great win for the Defiance Bulldogs. Might be one of those wins that propels them to a great season because they have some fantastic parts that are going to get do nothing but get better as the season goes on. That clock is beginning to roll here. Really didn't get anything set. So second down. Backed up about the one yard line, so Defiance will kind of have to move this one forward. You see the student section starting to make their way down to the sideline. They are going to explode on this field. So play clock coming all the way down. Let's see what happens here as Defiance is going to take a timeout. Uh, they might have to actually go under the center and take a snap from the center and fall forward. Yeah, with that the one, you can't really take a knee back and you're going to give up a couple of points here. And there's no doubt that Napoleon's just going to send everybody through A and B gap as they can. So it'll be tough for even Castile to get moving forward back five yards deep. So something they haven't done a whole lot, taking a direct snap from the center, they might have to do that. That yeah, might be what is being talked about in this huddle right now. Well, the good news, though, for Defiance, all they got to do is snap it one more time, unless they get a safety. Snap it one more time and start thinking about celebration. Defiance back on the field here. So we're looking at one more snap before we can wrap this one up. Stay in that tight formation. The quarterback sneaks. That's all they need to do. And that should do it here from Morley's Field at Buckermeyer Stadium. So last year, Defiance at home used its defense to come up with a big 7 0 win. And come here, shown a little bit on offense, Miles. They've come into the Lions' den and get a big win over their rival to kick off the season. Now you got to go back to our first key of the night, our first check of the night, rather. Play harder. Last year they played harder, got to win. They played extremely hard tonight. They were the more physical the two teams. They deserve to win this football game. Hats off to Defiance and best luck on Napoleon moving forward. So 28-7 our final score. Defiance gets the win uh, over Napoleon. So at 1-0, Defiance will jump into WBL play. By the way, tough one for them as I kind of take a peek at your schedule. St. Mary's, one of the teams uh, expected to compete at the top of the league. And again, for Napoleon, no easier big Henry County rivalry coming up against Liberty Center. So 28-7, Defiance wins the River Rock, second time in a row, first time since 2000 and 2001, that Defiance can claim the Rock for two consecutive seasons. So for our entire WOSN crew and my partner, Miles Holiday, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.